Well, with Halloween around the corner, it's only fitting that we play some monster-themed horror video games. <laughs> so, what's your favorite horror character? Is it Chucky? Maybe the Frankenstein monster? Well, I've always been a big fan of the Wolfman. With so many werewolf movies over the years, it was only a matter of time before they jumped into video games, and in 1990, we were given Werewolf The Last Warrior. Even the cartridge art shows the main character, Warwolf, tearing through the cartridge, so you know it's going to be a good game. The story takes place on Red Earth, Earth's second colony planet. Dr. Faryan adventured into a cave and awoke an ancient evil that turned him into an evil entity. Afterwards, the good doctor created a bunch of evil mutants to imprison nearly everyone on Earth. The only hope for humanity, of course, is a man who can transform into a werewolf. Yeah. So it can't be that bad, right? Well, Data East, the game's publisher, even included a comic book with the game's release. So this game must be a hit, right? Something about these bad guys, though, makes me think of the Foot Clan ninjas from Ninja Turtles, but with a classic Iron Man helmet for a head. There's something about this werewolf that's really puzzling me. He seems to be missing something, but I can't quite figure it out. Oh yeah, hands. From what I've read though, these giant blades he has are supposed to be retractable, so like Wolverine I guess? As you take on countless bad guys in this game, you'll have the chance to turn into a werewolf with blades for arms. Of course the werewolf is stronger than your human version, but taking too much damage forces you back into that lame human mode. You have to collect red W's which make the hero turn into a werewolf, granting him longer range melee attacks and the wall climbing ability. But there is a catch here. Getting blue W's make him turn back into a man, and if you're already in your human version, getting a blue W will kill you. Kind of like those little blue mushrooms from the Mario Brothers games. Now, for anyone who has ever watched a werewolf movie, one of the best parts of a werewolf movie are the transformation scenes, right? This one isn't exactly gripping with excitement, but it gets the whole transition effect across. While we're on the subject, the main character here, Warwolf, looks like a mashup of a werewolf, Wolverine, and he has the flowing hair of a Super Saiyan. It's kinda cool, I guess. As for the enemies, what are some staple enemies and weaknesses of a werewolf? Silver bullets? Van Helsing? Vampires? Nah, screw that. Let's pit this wolverine werewolf against some shuriken twigs and exploding rocks. And that's just for the projectiles. Even these rip-off Foot Clan ninjas are as surprised as you are to be fighting a werewolf that got carried away with a wolverine cosplay. Did you see that? If you look closely at the clip on the right, the purple ninja guy is literally flipped over to face the right but by flipping him, they flipped his trademark, oh, so now he's just hollering, ho. Needless to say that when you take too much damage and turn back into a human again, you are a little screwed because you won't be able to get very far if you have to climb over some brick walls. Now, I did discover this, but it's not very obvious right away, that by holding up on the D-pad and then jumping will allow you in your human form, even in your werewolf forms as well, to jump higher. Now, I know that in your werewolf form, you can climb across areas like this, but it isn't as easy as it sounds. I've jumped up to the ceiling and clicked every kind of combination of buttons to make it happen, but I can't make it work. I know you can do it, but from what I've read, a lot of other people have found this very difficult. When enemies disappear, that's when all the pitfalls, traps, and hazards come into play. Any good game with hazards has them designed to activate in patterns, allowing the player to carefully plan ahead. Hazards in this game, however, not only have wild patterns, but until you're right there, in the middle of it, getting damaged, you can't tell what their pattern is. Before you go into your next level, you are met with a really mean intro message from the boss of that level. You have five main bosses, therefore five main worlds you have to complete. Now, I'm no expert on copyright infringement, but something tells me that the inspiration for some of these bad guys is a little shady. The first boss fight involves dodging this flubber-based villain as he bounces off the walls, giving you a good chance to attack once he has solidified. Juggernaut here, oops, I meant Iron Head, just stomps around like a Hulk-sized infant while trying to throw bricks at you. And he's pretty easy to defeat if you just get above him and drop down to attack while he's preoccupied. 
the human torch, darn, I meant fireman, jumps to the left and right of the stage. So, standing close to the center will be a pretty safe place to wait. He does run across the stage back and forth and throws fireballs. He is easily the fastest of all the bosses, but with a little bit of quick reflexes, you can beat him in no time. This snake worm thing that you have to fight here takes on two forms during battle. First as a snake worm thing, and then a snake worm thing with wings that tries to squish you. All this bouncing really is starting to remind me of... Dr. Farian, the final boss, also has two forms, the first being a werewolf and the second being Magneto from X-Men. He even throws metal beams at you, it's that much of a ripoff. But in his werewolf mode, he is much faster than you. But as Magneto, he can throw metal and he will straight up tackle you as well as throw purple balls of copyright infringement at you. It's a game about a guy who turns into a werewolf to overthrow a dictator who is also a werewolf but also looks like Magneto, and who employs evil minions that mimic the Foot Clan from Ninja Turtles and has a best friend that's Juggernaut from the X-Men. It's an alright platform game at best, but it's nothing super fantastic. If anything, it was a cool way to play as a werewolf with blades for hands, running around taking out bad guys. The leveling system from man to werewolf and back works well enough, I suppose. It's pretty simple and kind of borrows a lot of things from Mario Brothers. The graphics aren't anything superb, but sheer novelty of beating up villains as a werewolf with blades for hands is kind of redeeming in a small way, at least for me. I mean, what other games can you play as a werewolf running around cutting down people?